Hello guys, and welcome back to Car Obsession. As you can probably tell by my attire, I'm on my way to work. Now, this is more of a vlog than anything. Um, when I picked up the Jimny, well, when I say when I picked it up, when the Jimny was delivered to me for me to review, I basically said to you guys, well, what sort of things do, do you want to know about the car? And uh, one or two of you wanted to know what it is like to live with on a daily basis. So I thought that'd be quite a good topic for discussion uh, because as much as the Jimny can be driven on road, then it is obviously road legal, it's more of an off-roader. So I'm on my way to work. So this is, Ill this is a little bit rushed, but I want to give you my experience of what this car has been like to live with. So, away we go. So the Jimny has been, as you can imagine, an interesting car to live with, but a fun one. And to be honest, I will genuinely be sad to hand this car back to Suzuki, which is more than what I can say for the previous version, the uh, third generation Jimny, which on the road, uh, it was definitely lacking. Now, the new car has been improved on road. Suzuki has uh, tweaked the suspension and a few other bits and bobs to make this car more compliant on the road, and it certainly is. Now, is it the perfect road car? No, but let's be honest, it's not really designed to be this car is of course an off-roader. So, just wait for these traffic lights to go green and I'll be on my way. Is it me or do traffic lights seem to take longer when you're on your way to work? They seem to take an eternity. Come on. Ah, where we go. Now, as I steer around to the right, this quickly brings me on to one of the first points of living with a Suzuki Jimny, the steering rack. It is a slow steering rack. Whack, turn it to Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Ross. It is a slow steering rack. Therefore, you do need to feed the steering wheel more and you will need more lock, particularly when you want to do slow uh, maneuvers like parking. My first experience of this particular car was leaving a multi-story car park and <laughs> it was it was quite amusing the amount of lock I needed to get the swing to get down the ramps and then to get out of the car park. So yeah, that's one of the first things you're likely to notice. You will need to work the steering wheel more in order to get the car to, you know, to maneuver. Um, yes, but talking about the on-road sensation, um, yes, you, you do still get uh, a, f a fair amount of body roll, and the ride, for the most part, is quite fidgety and quite busy, unless you're on a perfectly smooth road, which in the UK is a bit of a rare commodity, but it is better than the previous car. The previous car was quite bouncy in its suspension setup, and it was quite evident when you drove it on tarmac that it would much rather be on the muddy, dirty stuff. But the new car, it definitely feels like more of a road car. But let, let me stray away from that a little bit and talk about my experience of actually living with it because that's the whole point of this video. Yeah, like I said earlier, it has been interesting, but in a good way. And one thing that has surprised me is just how many looks this car gets. And some of you are probably thinking, well, that's because you've got cameras strapped to it. No, no, no. Even when I've got no cameras attached to the car, this Jimny does get a fair amount of looks. Now, that's probably because a lot of people don't know what it is. Uh, to my knowledge, Suzuki hasn't done any advertisement for this car whatsoever. I'm yet to see any adverts for this car, and it's been on the market for, what, about six, nine months now? So, yeah, I think the you know your average casual driver probably has no idea what this is. And it looks so distinctive and unique on the car market that this car does turn heads. I've, I've, I've literally had people take photos of me whilst I've been driving that up and down the motorway in this car, um, <laughs> which I really wasn't, wasn't expecting. So, so yeah, if you are a bit self-conscious, this may not be the car for you because it does get quite a lot of looks. 
Right, what else can I speak about? Uh, let's speak about the practicality. This is, of course, a small car. Therefore, the boot is, how can I put it? Oh yes, tiny. Now, when you have the rear seats up, I think you only get a capacity of about 85 litres or so, um, which is not very large at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've got some pockets that have a, a higher capacity. But however, if you fold the rear seats down, you do get 377 litres, which is 53 litres more than the previous car, which, okay, it, it is far from gargantuan, but it is an improvement. And you can you know, get a weekly shop in there when you have the rear seats down, of course, and the car does become more practical. So if you're the type of person who wants an SUV that can swallow up a lot of luggage or bits and bobs or whatever it may be, this car won't be for you. But I imagine those kind of buyers are more, they're more interested in a crossover or, you know, you kind of like a soft roader, so to speak, like a Nissan Qashqai or a Kia Sportage, that kind of thing. This car really is for the diehard Jimny fans and for those who want a cheap off-roader that can pretty much go anywhere. So this car is very unlikely to appeal to your average car buyer. This is a niche car to say the least and that's by no means a bad thing. It's just this car, it does have a particular market. Right, what else can I say about living with this car? This may sound really picky, um, but I do want to point it out because it is one of my um, experiences living with the car. The automatic headlights, I find they are a bit too sensitive, a bit too eager to kick in. Pretty much no matter what time of day it is, unless it's really bright sunlight, the automatic headlights want to come on. Uh, and quite annoyingly, to, oh, oh I was about to say, to disprove my point, they've turned themselves off, but the automatic headlights have just literally come back on. So yes, I know it's a bit dreary this morning and a bit gray, and a bit cloudy, but yeah, the automatic headlights have come on. Um, now, don't get me wrong, you can turn, turn them off, so I'll do that. So this is a very picky thing to say, and I imagine some of you watching are probably going, oh, why is he moaning about such a small thing when you can just turn them off? Yeah, I know guys, but like I say, it's just one of the things I've noticed uh, living with this car. Uh, another thing I find annoying, and this isn't the only car to do it um, on the car market, but still, it is uh, quite frustrating. When you turn the engine off and you're getting ready to leave the car, if you leave the key in the ignition barrel and you open the door, it bleeps at you, which is, um, I just find that kind of thing annoying because Never have I left a car and left the key in there. I just don't know. Has anyone ever done that? Surely not. Uh, if you have, please let me know. But yeah, I've been driving for almost eight years now. Blimey, eight years, such a long time. Well, it is to me anyway. It only feels like one or two years ago since I passed my test. First time I'll add uh, three minors. But yeah, I've been driving for almost eight years now and never have I left a car with the key inside. Never, ever, 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 ever. Uh, watch me go and do it today, just to uh, disprove my point. So yeah, that is quite annoying. Um, what else? The, the Jimny is quite an easy car to drive. The five-speed manual works well. Yes, the throw is long, but the train feels quite mechanical, it feels quite assured. I'll tell you one thing I like about this car, which may not be for everybody, but you do get quite a bit of transmission noise. You can hear it whirring in the background. Another thing about the Jimny is you get a high commanding driving position. Now, that can be said for a lot of SUVs, but Compared to other SUVs I've driven and soft roaders, I definitely feel higher up in this car compared to, let's say, a Qashqai or a Sportage or a Honda CRV. Uh, if anything, I almost feel like I'm driving a Transit. 
in regard to how high I'm sitting, which is by no means a bad thing. Uh, for some buyers, I think it'll be great. Uh, you really do get a great visibility off the road. Um, and to help with visibility, or oh, there's a Sportage literally passing me right now. To help with visibility, every panel on this car has got a large window in it. So obviously I've got a, you know, a, lot, a large windscreen. These windows are very large. We've got a decent sized window at the rear. And we've also got windows um, heading towards the C pillars. So visibility in this car is simply fantastic. Uh, this car does not have a reversing camera or front or rear parking sensors, but you don't need it. It's a small car and you can see out of it so easily. Uh, in fact, in one of my other videos, I, uh, I basically said this is a greenhouse on wheels because it's just so much glass. Uh, very easy to see out of. I think one topic which quite a few of you will want to know about is of course fuel economy. Now this car isn't the most frugal. Uh, there's only one engine available, a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol. On a combined run, Suzuki states it will achieve 35.8 mpg and I've pretty much got that. Uh, on the motorway, uh, the official figure for that is, well, you've got the new WLTP method of testing and they have different categories. So you've got high, which is um, a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour, and that's 40 point something in regard to MPG. And then you've got um, very high, which is speeds of a maximum of 81 miles per hour, and that's uh, 30 point something. So obviously, on, uh, in the UK, the uh, maximum speed on the motorway is 70 miles per hour, unless you're on the M25, in which case you'll be lucky to do 20 at some point. Uh, but yes, yeah, so a bit difficult to gauge the official figure for 70. So I suppose on that basis, you know, uh, 40 to 30, that's 35. So on the motorway, I was getting around um, 38 MPG, which I know is not really anything to write home about and if you want that extra bit of economy you will of course want a diesel but as i've said there's only one engine available for this car which is a 1.5 litre petrol um, just quickly talking about the engine um, it replaces the old 1.3 litre petrol used in the old car it offers more power as you would expect from a larger displacement but it is 15 percent lighter so that's pretty good. In regard to power, it's 101 horsepower with 130 newton meters of torque. And it has a maximum top speed of 90 miles per hour. Mm. But if you go for the four speed automatic gearbox, the top speed does fall down to um, 87 miles per hour. Not that you buy this car based on speed anyway. So obviously I've spoken a lot about how the car behaves on the road. Off the road though, it is fantastic. It's simply superb. I was gonna say it's a fantastic off-roader for the price, but no, let me rephrase that. It is a fantastic off-roader, full stop. It really is really, really capable, even on road tires that come as standard. Yeah, um, this car is so impressive and because it's light and it's got a short wheelbase it can pretty much go anywhere you know pop pop some knobbly tires on it and like a, one of those snorkels and yeah you could pretty much go anywhere you damn well please so suzuki you have made a cracking off-roader and um this car will be so popular that suzuki will not be able to make them quickly enough uh, I don't know what the official waiting time is for one of these, but I imagine it's going to be quite a few months. If it's anything less than a year, I will be staggered, frankly, because what Suzuki has done with this car, pardon me, is, is simply fantastic. The cup holders in the middle, they're kind of behind you somewhat. So when you want to put a drink in there, when you're driving, obviously you don't really want to take your eyes off the road, but to to get a bottle in there without looking, it is a bit tricky. Now, you do kind of get the hang of it as you get to know the car a little bit more, but I do wish the cup holders were a bit more 
Uh, I, I wish wish they were uh, brought forward a little bit. Um, motorway experience, that's, that's probably a good one to talk about. Now, granted this car isn't designed for the motorway, and I imagine a fair amount of you watching this are unlikely to take your Jiminy on the motorway on a regular basis. But as it happens, I've spent a lot of my week on motorways or faster roads, believe it or not, in this car. And yes, it is tiring, to be honest, but it's not quite as noisy as you may expect. Uh, some reviews will say that it's, you know, um, well, I actually watched um, Matt Watson, uh, Matt Watson's? I actually watched um, Matt Watson's review on the car on Carwell, and he basically said on the motorway you will need to wear earplugs. Now, he may have said that in jest, but the Jimny isn't that loud on the motorway. Yes, it is quite boomy. And the lack of a sixth gear does mean that you will need to raise your voice a little bit to speak to any occupants, or you will need to crank the stereo up to hear your favorite tunes. But it's not deafening. Yeah, okay, it's not the most refined way of motoring, but it's not designed for motorways as I cross the M25. It's quite a fitting time to cross it. Um, yeah, this car isn't design designed for for motorways, it's more designed for you know, byways, let's be honest. Now I just want to speak about comfort once more. Now I spoke earlier about driving on the motorway and driving you know, a longer distance. One thing I find, and my wife Patsy had a similar complaint, these seats, they don't offer a lot of support for your upper back or your shoulders. And yes, I know this car isn't designed for comfort and it is built to a price and it's not built to be a Grand Tourer, but even so, for medium length journeys and of course longer journeys, I do find my shoulders and my upper back do start to ache a little bit after I've been in the car for quite some time. On the plus side, I do have heated front seats, which is good for those colder climates, but um, it has been quite warm in the UK, which is very nice indeed. So, I'm almost at work, so time for me to finish. Overall, the Jimny is a pretty easy car to live with. Yes, it does have its quirks, but I think that adds to the car's character. And it is definitely better to live with compared to the previous car. So if you have an older Jimny and you're thinking about upgrading, guys, what are you waiting for? Just do it. Yes, you will have to wait for the new car, but it is worth the wait, believe me. Anyway, yes, time for me to finish. I hope you have enjoyed this video or you have found it useful. If so, please do give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more Car Obsession.